Quilting Celebrations with Patrick Lowe's is brought to you by Robert Kaufman Fabrics, home of my Mixmasters collections, and all of the designer basics, prints, and batiks your quilt deserves. Sulky, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Sulky, express yourself. The Warm Company, manufacturers of the perfect, soft, warm battings for quilts, crafts, and wearable arts. And Realize Your Dream, Gamel Quilting Systems, and and computer-guided quilting machines. Today's show, I'm designing a birth announcement banner to welcome home a special delivery. You'll find complete instructions in the spring-summer issue of Quilting Celebrations magazine. Okay, so I had this idea, since this is the first episode mm -hmm. of the show, that, and it kind of feels like I've been giving birth all along and all this, this planning stages, that we would do like a, a baby theme. It's a baby. So I had this idea. I thought it would be cute to do a little teddy bear banner. Let me just see if I can sketch out the bear. I love watching you do this. This is so different from the way I oh. work because I'm, yeah. I don't feel like I draw well. So yeah. I skip that part and go right right from my brain onto the design Exactly, wall. exactly. So, so I love watching you do this. Okay. This is well, this is a little sloppy because we're, we're going to do it fast so I can get the idea across to you. But, um, you know, just a very simple shaped face, just kind of bubbly. Um, you know, little round eyes. And I'll show you what I wanted to do to make the difference between okay. the boy and the girl. So the little boy teddy bear is going to have a, a bow tie, you know, and just mm -hmm. put it, applique, put it under his chin. But then for the girl, we'll just put it on top of her head. Oh, great. So that's the only change yeah. that has to be made, you know, if you decide to make two or, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, do one for each just in case, um, you can do it easily either way. And then, um, so my idea for the banner was, you know, just a very tall, skinny banner so that it would hang on a door. Um, we'll put the teddy bear just down here at the bottom. I'll make sure his eyes look a little better than that, but... <laughs> and the bow. Oh, you know, I, I love doing... Um, since you're a piecer, if you wouldn't mind helping me with this, we can do um, just a, a little alternate, not a checkerboard, but... Um, just alternate two shades of either pink or blue and do the um, all the border in maybe one inch squares because I think Ooh, this great. is only you know, going to be maybe 15 inches wide, 14, 15 inches wide and then we can do, I know people are going to balk at this but I'll teach them how to do it. They, a lot of people don't like to satin stitch or applique letters but we'll, we'll work it's on that. It's not that bad. No, no. it's not. It's and I not. love the um, the contrast that you're going to get around there with the frame, that'll be one. Yeah, it, I, it definitely enough. needs a frame. Yeah. And I also, uh, I have a new line of fabric out called Meander from Robert Kaufman. It's, um, it looks like you've stipple quilted, just oh, just Meander. So yeah. I can use that for the background and I think I think it comes in the same shade. So we'll try mixing the dot to dot with the, the Meander maybe. Oh, that'll be nice. Give it a little bit of change. In exactly. the scale of the fabric. So I think we're ready to, uh, I'm going to take this to the computer because I've got to, you know, make templates and things like that. So I'll either, you know, I'll scan this in and maybe do some sketching on the computer and come up with the templates. Okay, so that's how you do it. You do your hand drawing as your inspiration uh, and kind of firm yeah. it up. And then Usually transfer. doodles, you know, nothing more. Um, sometimes I do more fi finished drawings, but not always. And um, this one I don't think, I, since the shapes are very simple, I'm probably going to be able to just draw them in Illustrator and uh, not have to scan it in or anything like that. So I can go do that. I can probably have uh, templates ready to work on maybe in an hour or so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's way faster than me trying to do it like this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got the help of a, a nice iMac, too, yeah. behind me, so. <laughs> that would help, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we're ready to go. All right, this Let's is gonna be great. Let's go make this thing. All right, Good. thank you. So this is the part where I look like a professional. Um, because I get to use computer software oh, to perfect wow. so my that's design how you a little do bit. It? That's yeah. been my problem then. Yeah. I well, I don't that. say I don't think you have a problem. <laughs> um, but this is what I, you know, I took the drawing, the, mm -hmm. the, the sketch that we did, and I just, uh, you know, drew it from scratch in Illustrator. So I ended up with a banner. It looks like uh, I came out about 13 inches wide. Um, and this is where you get to see whether or not it's going to be an easy thing for someone to do fusible applique or uh, satin stitching on because these letters, you know, they have to be. A, a good enough size that you can maneuver that around um, under right. the needle. I took the, I, I have already drawn the teddy bear's face. There he is. So you can see here, we have the bow at the bottom mm -hmm. under his chin for the bow tie, but we can also pop it up there. And oh, how slick is that? Now it's a, a blue girl. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I'm just gonna 
copy that, and I'm going to paste it right into our banner that we have right here. So there he is. Oh, wow. Amazing. Well, thank it's you. It's simple, and it says what you want it to say, and yeah. it's fun. It should be simple. It shouldn't be a chore to put together yes. something celebratory. You want to have fun doing it, and you want to have fun with the celebration. So mm -hmm. try to make it as simple as possible. Oh, it's awesome. Well, I think we're ready to, uh, well, I think we're going to make the girl one so that we can see something different. We'll do it all in pink, so we're going to go out into the studio and work on the pink. Great. It's a girl banner. Good. It's time to start. Okay, them. cool. Yes. <laughs> So here we are in the studio. This is my quilt and create studio here in Phoenix, Arizona. These are a bunch of my friends that come here for Quilt Cafe and some of the open sew and classes that we have here at the studio. Um, I love you guys, I hope you know it, and I really appreciate you being here for the show. We are now going to work on putting together the I keep calling it a checkerboard border, but it's not checkerboard. We've got alternating colored squares that we're going to put together. Kay is a masterpiecer, so I'm going to have her do oh, that. Now, everyone that knows me is laughing because... I'm laughing inside. Yeah, because but. they call me the lazy quilter. Oh, well, I know a lot of those, too, so yeah. it's okay. So I'm a lazy it, if quilter. If it matches, it's okay. If it doesn't, it's okay. Well, this but has to match. for you, I will make it match. <laughs> this, I'll um, make it there match. is a little bit of a trick to this because we do have you know, a certain number of squares that have to line up with the, the background fabric. Right. And it's, it is easiest to uh, strip piece it. So why don't you go ahead and show how okay. you got to this point? How, what, okay. what steps you needed to take? What you need to do first is you just need to start piecing your two contrasting strips together. And how wide did we cut those? Um, did we cut them? Inch and a half. Inch and a half, thank you. So we're gonna have an inch finished. So we're gonna take one of each of the contrasting fabrics and put them right sides together. Raw edges even. Raw edges even. Do you pin? I don't. I don't either. A lot of people pin. It slows me down. Yeah, me too. So we're going to take these two pieces right sides together. We're going to slide them under here to the machine. What presser foot are you using? I am using just a regular piecing foot. Okay. So I'm going to put this under here, drop my foot, and if I had a little tag I'd start way back, but mm -hmm. I'm going to start right there. Okay. So now I'm looking ahead this way, and I'm just going to piece these together. Is this a, a scant quarter inch, would you say, or is it okay? Yeah, it's scant. Okay. We want to leave room for that thread exactly. and leave room for the edge when we. You don't have a lot of room it. to play with because these are finish out at an inch, right. so it's. And you want to make sure that you do have your full inch. So I'm just looking ahead and piecing right down this strip. What I'll end up doing is doing several sets of these. Right so that then I will take two sets and stitch two sets together. It speeds up the process. Yes. And I'll just stop periodically and readjust since I'm not pinning. A, a lot of times in, um, you know, more traditional quilting, log cabins, you know, you're doing your uh, half square triangles, things like that, you need to be a little bit more precise than this maybe. Right. But again, we're just, we're putting a frame on a door banner. So right. we don't have to be quite as, uh, this is supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, exactly. I don't want it. What I'm going to do is stop right here. Okay. Because I'm lazy, I don't have to stop You're and start chain, then. Chain I'm going to chain these right together. So I'm going to take the next set and put them right sides together, and I'm going to slide the end right underneath there, so that I continue, and then I'm going to adjust it. Get my Looks edges good. together, and zip right down these strips. Well, you like to speed right through it. Oh, I do. So do I. <laughs> I do, yes. Speed sewing. So I readjust these strips again since I'm not using those pins, and I really think it goes much faster this way than taking the time to pin. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And I do think I'm more accurate this way. And it's not even wavy. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a pretty straight seam. So I'm going to run right off the edge, and then, oh, this is the most fun. There's a button here that I can push. Oh, yeah. And it cuts my thread. I, I love my cutter it's on It's so exciting. Yeah. I love that. So now I have these two sets of strips, mm -hmm. and I'm going to sew them together. OK. OK? So I'm now going to put right sides together again. So you don't press first. You can. If you'd like me to, I will. But 
I'm an old garment seamer are, from oh, the past, so, and so you had to press first. every yeah, seam so press as first. you sew it. But it's fine. Yeah. We're, okay. we're fine with it. All right. We're we'll going to snip afterwards. this apart. So what Patrick is saying is that we could take this to the iron now and press it right like this so that we are putting our seam allowance towards the darker fabric. I agree. Yep. And then we would put this piece right sides together right on here. And we're going to line that up. And now we're going to zip right down this side. Mm -hmm. Same thing we did before. And I'm going to gauge it right there. Take a look at that side. Line these up and zip right down the side. As long as you make sure that your raw edges are lined up, it's going to come out straight. Yeah, it may look a little bit like a mess right now, but it really will come out just fine. So I'm going to keep going down this side, zipping it together. Mm -hmm. Get those raw edges together right there. And we're going to zip right down this strip. And it's just so easy to look down and eyeball that mm -hmm. and not have to worry about pulling those pins out. Right. Or having and them jam right. into your finger. Exactly. Or exactly. Run under the presser foot and break yes. the needle. I'm really good at that. Yeah, I've done that a lot. And we get to the end and we get to use the fun button again. Cut that thread. Yes. Okay. So now we are ready to press these. Mm -hmm. And we are going to press them with the seam allowances to the dark. Would you like me to do that for you? I would love that. Thank you. So when you press those together, it works so great because then those seam allowances are going to nestle together. So you're going to interlock. Yeah. And you want to do both seam allowances toward the dark. Right. Both seam allowances toward the dark. Right. And that'll raise um, the darker color. Now, see, when I'm doing this, I just go underneath and, and pull it Th to the that's inside. That's exactly what I do, too. OK. I've got hands on both sides. And what that does then in the finished piece, it's going to all of the darker colored squares will be a little bit raised uh, from the design, which I really like because it gives it some texture and depth. Uh, I love that effect too. It's adding even an extra layer other than the quilting. Right, exactly. That you've got it physically lifted up. So now that we have those all pressed. Yes, now we need to cut some segments mm -hmm. here. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut one and a half inch segments. Mm -hmm. Just like we cut our strips okay. when we're starting with our strips to begin mm -hmm. with. We're going to square up one end. Exactly. So we're going to line this up so that we can get this edge nice and square. Okay. Okay. Start right there. I was just eyeballing to see if they were even. And were they? Um, they're pretty close. Okay. So we can check that when we get here by checking our lines across uh -huh. and see how we're doing. You're now doing when you good. cut, do you like to see a little piece of the fabric on the other side of the lines or do you like I, to be right I on the lines? I try to be like right on it. Right on the line, okay. I don't think it really makes all that much of a difference, but I try. No, and I only ask because on something this small. Splitting hairs. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to cut segments right here, okay? We're going to end up with a bunch of these segments so that we can put those all together to make that border. And you're just going to keep cutting mm -hmm. and keep cutting. So that when you have enough, what you will do is you will then start linking them together to make chains. So you'll start exactly. putting them right side together, just like this. Mm -hmm. Bring it over, and you're going to drop the foot down again. And this time we are going to have to start so that right we catch on the, edge. the exactly. edge. Yes. And do you not? Do you backstitch? I am not a backstitcher. Okay. Are you? Um, I'll do it if you want me to. Oh, well, I don't care. I, it's just when I, if I don't do it, like I just finished doing a triple Irish chain quilt mm -hmm. and I didn't do enough backstitching. And then also when you go and cut your strips after you've backstitched, you've released it anyway. So right. you can't hold it up and leave any, you know, have any weight on it at all. It pulls those stitches apart that's, and opens your seams true. back up. So that's true. That's the only reason I asked. Yeah. So I'm going to drop my foot down and I'm going to scooch it up there just a little bit. 
and I'm going to stitch that quarter inch. Line it up exactly like I did with the other pieces. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to start sending them in one after another. So I'm just going to put this right up next to it just as I did when I was strip piecing the long strips together. Exactly. And one thing I want to say is the, the real purists are going to cut one and a half inch squares, single squares, yes. and piece them all together. Yes. That is insanity, and I will not partake. So I agree wholeheartedly. OK, okay. Wholeheartedly. so this is the way that yes. I would choose to do this. Yes. Um, you can, um, if you're even more anal retentive than I am, you can piece together tiny little squares like postage stamps. So. Oh, wow. But I wanted to show, this is what we're going for here. This, um, this is the kind of border uh, that we're trying to put together. So it does have to be you know, fairly accurate. It's a great frame for the piece. Um, but that is the simplest way, I believe, to do it. So. Oh, I think by far. Cool. Yeah. Yep. And it gives you great contrast around there. Exactly. So the next thing that we need to do, th this is um, some busy work that would be done beforehand just so that you can uh, set it aside and then pull it back out later when you're actually ready to put the border on. But the next thing that we need to do is to get these templates traced and uh, show how to do the fusible applique, apply them to the background fabric. My Mixmaster's collection of fine cotton fabrics from Robert Kaufman is a fantastic family of basics and blenders. It's like a toolbox of textures for quilts, accessories, home decor, and more. I've included a wide variety of prints from dots to bubbles and stripes to squiggles. Some whimsical, some sophisticated. Look for my Mixmaster's collections at a local independent fabric retailer near you, or you can find them all online at robertkaufman.com. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I have some light steam seam too. This is truly the kind of fusible adhesive that I like to use, and the reason is it's not stiff. And when you're making things like uh, baby banners or baby quilts, you want to have that you know light. You don't wanna be stitching through cardboard layers. Um, right. It also helps if you're um, doing thread painting on top mm -hmm. because it's nice and thin. Oh yeah, I'm it sure. It works beautifully yeah, for that exactly. as well. Okay, so this is my template that I printed out. You saw me draw it right, on the computer. Right, so that's what you had in the computer and you exactly. just pulled those I, elements out. Exactly, and then I pulled out. all the elements okay. out to turn them into templates. Sometimes you have to do a little tweaking, but not so much on this one. But then I have these templates that I'll trace onto the, the paper side of the fusible adhesive. Okay. The light steam seam too, we do have two pieces of paper. There's the top layer and the bottom that will peel away. So you just lay this over your template. In this case, it doesn't matter so much because all of the design is symmetrical. The letters are not symmetrical, and I did have to flip those because you want them to, when you press them on to okay, the wrong yeah. side of the fabric, to be the right way. So all of the patterns in the magazine, any patterns that I design, I've already flipped templates. So, so you've already done that mirror image to make exactly, it easy for us. That's exactly. That's appreciated. So it's just a matter of tracing. And I use a Sharpie marker because it dries fairly quickly. And I'm one of those people that runs my hand all over my design. If I use pencil, I end up with a lot of pencil lead all right, over my hands. Right, so you'd hands. have it all over your hand and smear it all over. Exactly, yeah. it gets all over yeah. everything else, all over the fabric. So it's just that simple. Trace um, all of your templates. That's the inside of the ear for the bear. It'd be a different color. And this is where we can really appreciate the simplicity of your designs, the ease at which you can trace things. Uh, especially in this one. I, I do have some that are a little more complicated, yeah. and I have been cursed out before. But yeah, it, yeah it's a really that. simple process. Okay, so basically with the two-sided paper, mm -hmm. all we have to do is peel one side off. Now you wanna make sure though, the adhesive is loose. It presses to one side or the yes. other of the paper. Yes. Sometimes the, the adhesive shifts to the other side. That's really easy to fix. You just press it back on. And press it, okay. So when you peel it apart, you just wanna make sure that your adhesive is on the side that you've traced on. And we just lay it down on the fabric and press it into place. Press you know, really well. You don't want this coming back up later. And it's that simple. Then we're going to just cut this out. And we're not leaving any seam allowance, anything. We're just cutting directly on you the line because that's... You have the choice. Some people want to overlap their pieces a little bit because they're not real sure of their satin stitching. So sometimes you might want to leave a little hair outside of the line and then you can overlap your pieces and you don't have to worry. This design, you don't have to do that so much. You don't have to really worry about it. They don't, uh, you're not going to have gaps between pieces. Okay, so then we've got that shape. Now what I do, in the next thing in the process would be to transfer the dashed lines, which are usually just detail lines in the design, transfer them to the other side so that you have them on the right side of the fabric. Oh, okay. The best way to do this, to me, is to, just to hold it up to the light. And I can see that line coming through 
See how technical yeah. I am and yeah, all the tools are, that I yeah. use? <laughs> and that's just giving you a guideline, right? It's as easy as that. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is just to layer the face. I like to layer all the elements and get them fused together before actually putting them onto the background. You don't have to have all that fabric. Oh, that's and a great idea. Then yeah. you've got just one design you're plopping on your background. Exactly. So I'm just gonna position this. And what I like also about the light steam seam too, you can position this and kind of press it into place and it's got enough tack, tackiness to it that it'll stay in place, you know, uh, while you decide if you like the design or not or you need to rearrange it. Yes, that, and that's one of the elements I love about it. That's another reason why I've traced these lines on the right side of the fabric because then it gives me my placement line for the nose to just fit right in there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fuse this all into place. And again, there's multiple layers, so you wanna make sure that you're holding that iron on there long enough to really fuse the fabrics together. You don't want them peeling up when you go to the satin stitching process. And I do use a lot of steam. Whoops. I can see a little steam coming out of there. And see how easy that is to peel right back up, even if you make a mistake. So you're in effect just putting the puzzle back together. Yeah, it is. It's exactly like putting a puzzle together. Okay, so we have that finished. So now that we've done that, we just cut right along this line. There we go. Okay, and now, We'll just peel that paper away. Oh, and you started from the inside. Oh, that makes sense. Right. Now that we have Ooh. that edge that we can't fray, exactly. you can just start it from the exactly. inside. And so now the edges of the teddy bear's head are fusible, but the rest of it doesn't have that stickiness so, or okay, stiffness so to we'll it. Have no, it'll be able to flex and move however exactly. we need it to when we stitch it. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so now we have the banner completely, uh, all the appliques fused mm -hmm. to it. And the thing that's so easy. It's very easy. So and, easy. You know, all you have to do is iron. Yeah. But the thing that I, I really try to impress on students when I'm out teaching this is that you really need to view the design as though it's in layers. Anyone that works in Photoshop or, or something like that, you know layers. And that's how this works. The teddy bear's head is the furthest back layer from your eyes. Oh, okay. The bow is in front mm -hmm. of that. The inner ears are in front of that. The nose is the highest layer. That would be the last thing that you would satin stitch. Okay. You always start with the lowest layer first. So what I'd like you to do, if you would, is start the satin stitching here on the teddy bear's ear because that's going to make it easy for us to go back when we stitch the bow and stitch over our loose end. Okay, so we shouldn't just be zipping around here just no, anywhere no, we want to no, go. No. We want to think exactly. about that a little bit. And we've put some sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer underneath it and we just cut the, the stabilizer in pieces that's small enough to work with easily. So I've cut a piece for Kay that fits behind the teddy bear's head and will you know, support and stabilize underneath when she's doing the satin stitching there. So it looks like you've got this under control. I'm gonna let you have at it. And if you've got a baby on the way that you'd like to make these banners for, you can get the pattern in Quilting Celebrations magazine and make your own, or you can get more information at quiltingcelebrations.com. Thanks, Kay. Oh, my pleasure. So see, you can yeah, do it. Yeah, I can do it. It's yeah. a lot easier yeah. than you thought. Top quality, sulky, decorative threads help you get the look you love. Create soft, warm, elegant embroideries with gorgeous, sulky rayons. Add exquisite texture, tone and vibrancy to your quilting projects with sulky cotton blendables and solids. Lighten up the look with 60 weight sulky poly light or add a subtle sparkle or a brilliant shine with sulky metallics. With 19 stabilizers, Sulky has the perfect one for every project. Sulky has everything you need to create with confidence. Welcome back to Quilting Celebrations. We have our It's a Boy and It's a Girl banners. These are actually the finished versions, but I wanted you to see the quilting in the teddy bear's face because I like the design to begin with, but when I saw what my friend Jessica Jones did with the quilting on the teddy bear's face, I fell in love with these things. This pattern um, is basically a swirl back upon itself that just travels around the features in the teddy bear's face, and Jessica's gonna show us a little bit about how to do that today. I, one of the things that I think is so interesting with free motion quilting is as an artist, when I'm drawing, I draw with a pencil and I'm drawing on paper. I move the pencil as I draw. But when you're free motion quilting, you have to think of it a little bit differently. And you're actually, it's like I'm moving the paper against the pencil. So when you have to rethink it that way, sometimes it's best to do a little drawing for yourself and get used to the pattern and how you're gonna move in and out of the spaces that you're confined to, like the teddy bear's head here.
So I've got a sketchbook here. Everybody, this is Jessica Jones, who has done a lot of the quilting in Quilting Celebrations magazine. I am so proud to uh, be able to have her work featured in the magazine. And I've got a sketchbook here for you. I'd like you to show me what you do. Okay. Usually when I learn a new quilting design, I like to kind of map out what I'm doing before I start quilting. So I can have the pattern in my head, and I, when I get to the machine, I know where I'm going. Exactly. Um, with this particular pattern, this swirl pattern, what I like to do is I start and I come in on a big swirl. So we're gonna stop right there. Now I left that really open because I wanna be able to pull back through and come out. Now when I come out, I'm echoing against this and going into another swirl, leaving enough space to be able to get out. That's what I was thinking. So it is like echo, you're almost like shadow quilting. Really. Exactly. Yeah, staying the same distant, equidistant from the lines each exactly. time. Exactly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep making these swirls, but while we're making them, we're gonna echo back on the swirls mm -hmm. that we've previously made. So we can come here and add another line in here and then come out yeah. into another swirl. And what that does, it just adds on to the design that we already have. Well, and it makes it easier to confine yourself to that space too. When you run out of room, you can just do this point and then double back to get back within the yes. parameters. Okay. And another thing that helps with the echoing is, say I need to get over here, and I'm the whole way over here. Instead <laughs> of luck. having to stop and start, mm -hmm. what I can do is I can just echo, swirl out. I see where you're echo, going. Echo and go around and then come back out. That's great. So this would be a really good pattern for like water or clouds or there, there's a lot of uses for it. Yeah, yeah, actually with water you would just elongate them yeah. a little bit more, yeah. um, you know, in a, a wider swirl. I can tell I'm gonna have to learn it myself. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Do you wanna try it on some fabric? Sure. Cool. So we've got some, uh, some of my dot-to-dot -dot fabric that we used in the banner uh, from Robert Kaufman, and we've sandwiched it so that Jessica can just kind of play around a little bit and you can watch. Now, where would you start, like, within the design, though? It, in the teddy bear, say, well, what was your if starting I were, point? If I were to be quilting this right now, what I would do is I would do all of my ditch work or my outlining work first. Oh, sure. That way it's a little bit more stabilized right. And I especially like ditch work and outlining because it makes these things, different elements pop out. Especially in applique, yeah. Yes. It's very textural. And so after I do that, what I would do is I would find a nice little hiding spot, usually in a corner or a little crevice, and I would start in there and then work my way, work way around. around. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna start my swirl and I'm gonna remember to keep it open yeah. um, because I wanna be able to get back out. Exactly. And we've, we've used a little bit of contrasting color thread here, so it, it's dark enough for you to see, hopefully. We actually, uh, Jessica actually used a very light color thread for the quilting on the bear. This, I, I think this would be a great pattern for using on water or clouds, uh, just an all over swirl pattern to fill space. I love the texture that it gives the quilt. So we're gonna come back out and come into another swirl. I also happen to know this is a lot slower than Jessica works on a long arm machine. She's amazing. <laughs> now I'm gonna echo back and come back out and go into another swirl. Going in, leaving enough room to come out. Now I'm gonna do some echoing to be able to fill in this space. Mm -hmm. The reason that we're doing this on a larger piece of batting than rather than stitching it within the teddy bear is so that you can see what the actual pattern is. You'll learn as you uh, get better at doing this and practicing how to fill that space or specific spaces. So this is just a good way for you to see the overall pattern. That's great, I love it. Oh, 
You can make your swirls different sizes too. Oh yeah. And just keep echoing off of them and it makes them grow a little bit bigger. Well, I noticed that's what you did too. I don't know if it's easy enough to see in the thread colors here, but going around the nose and the eyes when you've got tighter spaces to fill, she's done different sizes and that, that also changes it up a little bit, makes it more interesting pattern. That looks great, Jessica. Thank you very much. You guys, if you'd like to make one of these for yourself, again, the pattern is in Quilting Celebrations magazine. That's the spring-summer issue this year. And if you want more information on the quilting or other detailed aspects, you can go to quiltingcelebrations.com. Thanks a lot, Jessica. I'm really glad that you came and showed us this. Thanks. It looks beautiful. There are some products that I use so much, I just think that everyone knows about them and is using them too. Steamaseam 2 and Light Steamaseam 2 are my choice for fusible webs, and I really think they should be your choice too. The patented double stick adhesive allows perfect placement of your applique every time. Steamaseam creates a permanent bond that is washable and dry cleanable. Finish the edge with a decorative stitch or leave it raw, it's up to you. So when you hear me say fusible web, you know I'm talking about Steamaseam 2. Welcome back everyone. I'm here right now with Jessica Barnett from Zyron. Zyron has a really cool little machine that's gonna help us create something related to the baby banners that we just made. These are baby announcements for a baby shower or you can use them as a baby announcement, but it's based on the pattern that I created for the banners. And Jessica has done some really cool stuff with adhering fabric to paper and mixing layers of paper and embossing paper and vellum and all of that. And she's gonna tell you a little bit about how you could create these announcements for yourself. Yes, I'm gonna start. We used your actual fabric for the background of the invitation. And our fabric adhesive is permanent when you attach it to paper. That's so cool that you, all you have to do is put that in there and crank it through and it just puts a layer of adhesive onto the wrong side of the fabric. It does, the whole thing is a sticker now. So I'm gonna give it a good rub and this clear layer that I take off removes all oops, this extra adhesive because there would be sticky all over here. And then I'm gonna give us each one of these. Oh, I get to make one too? You get to. <laughs> cool. Get to work. Okay, it wants to curl up there. What I like to do is start peeling it up, and then, yep, I'm gonna lay my paper on there. Oh, I see. And then, your extra adhesive on the edge of the fabric will stay on this backing paper as you start cutting. Right. And I just held it up to the light at home to see that outline. So you're just cutting around the outside of the cardstock. Yep, just okay. to trim that little bit of extra fabric around the edge. So here's a piece that's already been cut out with the fabric attached to okay. the paper. And then we use the pattern to cut out the bear, all his little pieces. Mm -hmm. And the pattern for this, you're actually gonna find on the website, uh, quiltingcelebrations.com. You can use the pattern that's in the magazine for the baby banners, but you'd have to reduce it down. So you can get it on the website at full size and you can make the announcement from that pattern. And then we took these cut out pieces before they were attached to each other and used another component for the machine, the die cutting component, and embossed them with a little dotted texture yeah, that matches exactly. the fabric. This, this texture is great. I love the polka dot, you know, matches the, the fabric exactly. It look, And it's very cute for the baby theme. Okay, so here is our completed bear. He's embossed and he's he ready. He doesn't have a mouth. Well, <laughs> I'll put the mouth on later. That's your job later. Okay. So he's ready to be made sticky, and I also. Used my printer I love this part. on vellum to print out all the information that we needed that for the shower. That makes it look so professional. It is, and it's so easy. The only thing to remember with vellum is that you need to let it dry for a couple minutes sure. after it comes out of the printer because that shiny paper Surface. doesn't want to absorb right. it. Yeah. So I did three per page, and I've cut those out too, and this is all ready to make sticky. And because the Createopia adds adhesive all over and makes it into a big sticker, it's perfect for things like vellum, or if you're using it on acrylic. I think this would be a great thing for my granddaughter who loves stickers because she's got them all over my house and I know she'd love to make some stickers with the Createopia. Mm -hmm. 
when they have a favorite sticker and it's not sticky anymore and you can re-sticky. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. And see how you can't even tell there's no, adhesive on there because it's edge to that's edge. Beautiful. And now our bear is also a sticker. We just put him down there. And that's all you perfect. have to do is draw a little mouth on there little and we're done. Mouth and I don't think go. it gets any easier than that. No, quick and easy. Very cool. And you can, these are just half of eight and a half by 11 card stock. Yes. So all you have to do is go to your local office supply and you can get the envelopes, half eight and a half by 11, what is that? Five and a half. Five and a half by, by eight, eight, and eight and a half. And, a half. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got an envelope for it. So, I mean, really, it's a perfect project, easy to make at home, and it looks so professional. If you were to make the baby door banners, for a surprise gift for someone that you know that's having a baby and then make these announcements afterwards, I think you'd be their new best friend. Always. Crafty people are the best friends to have. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree, definitely. I'm back in my office at the computer with my friend Roseanne Tennant, and we've got a little online celebration planned via Skype with the gang at Fiddlesticks Quilt Shop in Boulder City, Nevada. Hi everybody, we're back for something different now. I, about two years ago, started a club in quilt shops called Party with Patrick, and it really is the epitome of what I feel about quilting and camaraderie and getting together with your friends and doing this for the fun of it and celebrating the seasons, the holidays, and life events. Um, I was very lucky to, immediately upon starting this club, get a group sign on for it to be the very first shop to join that has been with us ever since, and they're a load of fun and I want you to meet them. We're gonna do this via Skype. I'm gonna take you girls off a of mute. God help us. <laughs> How are you doing? Hi, I've, got, I've got one of your cohorts here. We're holding her hostage. It's Roseanne. Can you, can, Hi, Roseanne. Can, can you see her? Okay, great. I gotta tell you, these are some of the, we call them the Boulder Babes. All the girls up in Boulder City at Fiddlesticks Quilt Shop. Uh, owner Mary Summy, uh, and honestly, these are some great, great people. And they've helped me with a lot of the projects in quilting celebrations and for the show. And I'm just really honored to have you here for the first episode of the show with me. And I see some other people in the background. Who all's there? Everybody sound off. Okay. This is Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Hi. I see Barb back there. Hey, Barb. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Brooke is here. Hi, Brooke. <laughs> Melanie. Hey, Melanie. I see some projects back there, too. I see you've uh, been collecting some of the things that you've made in Party with Patrick. Every month, a different party packet goes out to the shop, and they get to make a different project every month for a little mini uh, quilt, and they get some recipes and things like that, and we just hold a little party in the quilt shops. It's a lot of fun. We've been having a blast with it. How about we have a little toast to uh, Fiddlesticks sure. Quilt Shop and the very first the inaugural Party with Patrick shop. Come on, girls, right. shoulder to shoulder. I want to know where- is optional, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna wear a tiara. Right. <laughs> to toast yeah. Patrick, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't be thinking of me when the champagne comes back up, though, okay? <laughs> Another thing that we do with the girls up in Boulder City uh, at Fiddlesticks Quilt Shop is called That Damn Christmas Party. And we started that a couple of years ago also. Boulder City is located right over the border from Arizona in Nevada at Hoover Dam. And so the Dam Christmas Party, that's how it got its name. And that retreat happens every July. It's a Christmas in July thing. We have a blast. Uh, we all get together. We don't get an awful lot of quilting done. Uh, it's a lot more laughing and eating than anything. Um, but that this year, it's July 13th through 18th. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you there. Cheers! You guys, we're going to sign off here. That's all we have now for this episode of Quilting Celebrations with Patrick Lowe. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, you guys, for joining me. This has been a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful first episode. I love you all. We'll talk to you soon. My Mixmasters collection of fine cotton fabrics from Robert Kaufman is a fantastic family of basics and blenders. It's like a toolbox of textures for quilts, accessories, home decor, and more. I've included a wide variety of prints from dots to bubbles and stripes to squiggles. Some whimsical, some sophisticated. Look for my Mixmasters collections at a local independent fabric retailer near you, or you can find them all online at robertkaufman.com. 
Top quality Sulky decorative threads help you get the look you love. Create soft, warm, elegant embroideries with gorgeous Sulky rayons. Add exquisite texture, tone, and vibrancy to your quilting projects with Sulky cotton blendables and solids. Lighten up the look with 60 weight Sulky poly light or add a subtle sparkle or a brilliant shine with Sulky metallics. With 19 stabilizers, Sulky has the perfect one for every project. Sulky has everything you need to create with confidence. There are some products that I use so much, I just think that everyone knows about them and is using them too. Steamaseam 2 and Light Steamaseam 2 are my choice for fusible webs, and I really think they should be your choice too. The patented double stick adhesive allows perfect placement of your applique every time. Steamaseam creates a permanent bond that is washable and dry cleanable. Finish the edge with a decorative stitch or leave it raw, it's up to you. So when you hear me say fusible web, you know I'm talking about Steamaseam too.